with just a few simple ingredients, just like this tomato, you can make your own fresh homemade salsa. That and a whole lot more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com, what could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. No matter where you live, you can compost year-round with the Worm Factory 360. It requires very little maintenance. As of 2010, the Worm Factory 360 is the only self-sorting worm composter made in the USA. Made with high-quality food-grade recyclable plastic with a 20-year limited warranty. For more information on how to purchase your own Worm Factory 360, visit www.lvworms.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151-acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting FOOD to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joey Baird. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, using what you already have. Well, if you're a lot like us, it's the middle of winter and you're starting to run out of the items that you've canned. We've run into that problem. We wanted to make some homemade salsa, so we had to go to the store and buy some ingredients. It's really easy to make, and Holly will show us how. Fresh salsa is a delicious snack that you can enjoy year-round. Um, in the summer, you can use your fresh tomatoes that you've grown in your garden, your onion, your peppers, and all, all that good stuff that you grow in yourself. You can even um, if you want to, you can go ahead and can it, peel the tomatoes, cook it down, and everything. I enjoy it during the winter when tomatoes aren't um, as ripe and fresh tasting, they're a little bit more bland, and it's something that kind of perks up your day, something fresh you can eat, um, especially as we're getting closer to uh, beginning of spring and you're kind of sick of winter. So I basically, um, you could call it pico de gallo also, but I just chop up my tomatoes and my onion and my peppers in the food processor. So I'm going to finish these tomatoes here and you can use whatever kind of tomatoes you want. I like these Roma tomatoes, um, they're actually cheaper at, at my local store um, than something that is on, growing on the vine and they're also, they, they're more of a, like a paste tomato which means they have more meat to them which is nice in salsa because obviously you don't want something super juicy. So. Um, I let my food processor do the work for me. You can dice this all by hand if you want. That's up to you. Um, I've already got a red onion in there, just a medium size, about half a cup to a cup. Um, and this is all for taste. Now, I don't really like hot peppers, um, unless in moderation. So if it's something that I'm going to be eating a lot of, I'm not going to add them. But like I said, that's all, all but what you like. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, got that in there. Turn this on, give it some pulses here. Now you can watch this, you can make it as chunky or as, um, you know, as smooth as you like. I'm going to dump this in a bowl and then as I add more ingredients, I'll just mix it together. That's what works best for me. If you have a bigger food processor, you can probably put it all together, but this is what I have. Now since I don't add hot peppers for that extra green color, um, and just because I like the taste of it, I'm going to add some of these um, these green peppers here. I kind of let these ones get away from me, so I kind of have to make sure I don't have any bad spots on them. I leave, a lot of people don't like the the ribs on the inside. I just leave mine on there. I don't see anything wrong with it. So I'm gonna add that into my tomatoes um, and then pulse that and get this all mixed up together. So now I'm gonna get this over here, get this mixed together. I've got all my stuff. That's all I wanted. And let's clean up the food processor. Now you can add all sorts of stuff to this. Some people will add um, garlic, you know, ground garlic, ground garlic, garlic, garlic powder, um, salt. I add lime, and actually lime gives it a lot of flavor. So I will add that before I add my salt. So let me get this all up here. I'm gonna get my lime ready. I'm gonna give it a good stir to mix the two different batches I did here in the food processor. And as you can see, it's getting to be that nice, beautiful color of salsa. I like using those red or purple tomatoes for the color. Um, I mean, onions. And it's really, like I said, up to you how you wanna combine this. You can give it a few tries. So I have a lime here. And it's always nice to Kind of smooth it out like that. Cut in half. Use my <laughs> use my citrus press. And I, you know, I never really used a citrus press before, and my brother-in-law told me, you know, you can just get a lot more juice out of lemons or limes that way, so, and he kind of showed me also, so I decided to go ahead and get one for myself, it's fairly inexpensive, and if you juice a lot of limes or lemons, it's definitely an investment you want to think about. Um, I like a lot of limes, so I'm going to add just a little bit more, because this is a bigger batch than I thought that I was going to make. But like I said, this is to your taste. I try not to add salt to it because if, you know, I want a lot of salt, I would just probably buy some salsa from the store. And if you have a couple, a couple extra limes after a day or so, if you have this in your fridge and you're gonna have it for a snack, you might wanna just juice the lime in there to help freshen it up, spruce up the flavors. It's good with whole wheat tortilla chips, whole grain ones, um, it's good on top of really any kind of meat um, as a fresh topping. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. You can make healthy nachos. You take your tortilla chips, add some fat-free cheese, and this you do it, put in the oven or the microwave and make yourself a plate of healthy nachos. And now let me just give this a taste here. Very good. I don't think it's gonna need any salt at all. The onion really helps spruce up those tomatoes along with the green pepper. If I were to toss maybe just the outside of a hot pepper in here, give it a nice little kick as well. So something to try, you can go ahead and put it in a airproof container in your fridge or bring this to your next party with some, you know, tortilla chips or anything. And uh, it's delicious, healthy, fresh salsa that you can make on your own.
So you've begun preserving food or you want to this year and you want to get a collection of canning jars started. Where do you purchase them? Well, you can go to your local garden center or hardware store and buy them in these 12 packs which give you the jars and the rings and the lids for anywhere from six to twelve dollars depending on what size the jars and where you live in the country or you can purchase them at yard sales and that's where we purchase m most of our nearly 800 canning jars the way you find out in your area the way we have it works well for us is we go to craigslist.org and underneath the yard sale tab and type in and do the search engine for canning jars well, how do you know if you're getting a good deal on the canning jars you're purchasing at the yard sale? Well, I would go to your where you would purchase your 12-pack of canning jars at, take a note card, and write down how much they are for the half pint, pint, quart, half gallon, whatever you're wanting to use. And then when you get home, divide out how much it is a jar. Now, in most cases, most yard sales will sell the canning jar with the ring you're going to have some that won't have the ring with them and that's a small expense that you'll have to purchase later but you're never going to get them with the lids and that's fine because you don't want to reuse them lids again so let's for, say for example at the local hardware store a 12 pack divides out to be about 65 cents a jar for example now if you go to a yard sale and they have a can jar with the ring for a quarter you're way money ahead also if you're going to buy in bulk at yard sales that's where you're going to get your best deal I've been to yard sales and seen cases and cases of cane jars underneath table and I will simply ask how much do you want for all of them? Well I got 168 jars for $15 and that figures out to be about 9 cents a jar and most of them had rings on them. And you're going to get great deals on cane jars like we have. Most people have purchased too many cane jars sometime in the past and they've never even been opened. And that comes with your rings. And I wouldn't use the lid because the rubber has probably dried out. But that has never ever been opened. And it's a heck of a deal. I think we purchased this for about five bucks. Your half gallon jars, this whole box was two dollars instead of nine that you would normally buy it from. So you just want to look on Craigslist, look in your local paper, and ask around where you can get your best deal for canning jars to store your food this summer. Garlic is one of the things that we enjoy growing in the garden and it's something that we use a lot when cooking, making different recipes. But your garlic, you don't want to just leave it out like that, you want to store it properly. And I was having a hard time storing my garlic, I was storing it wrong, it was rotting really fast. So I went online and I read some things about how to store garlic. So what I did is I found a container similar to this and it's got a nice airtight lid. Um, that's not as important as just having a lid for your garlic container because you're actually going to drill holes in it Because it's important from what I read online is you want to make sure it's kind of in a darker area But has good ventilation. So what is that I did is I found a container like this and I, dr I drilled holes in it And then I, that's where I store my garlic and as you can see this is my garlic container And it works really well. I just put my garlic in there whether I buy it from the store or um, from stuff that we've grown and you can as you can see there's many different holes in there for it to get ventilation but then when you put the lid on it helps keep the um, light from getting in there we just keep it in our cupboard in our kitchen so all you need basically is a container similar to this one or this one with a nice lid on it and you just need to drill and then if you want to paint it like I did you could paint it if you don't have a drill you could just take a nail hammered in there, poke a bunch of holes in it, but somehow you want to obviously have ventilation. So, simple solution for keeping your garlic fresh in your home. A no-bake Amish peanut butter pie is a wonderful treat that you can make with minimal ingredients. Now, the reason it's a no-bake Amish peanut butter pie is it's no-bake. Well, we cheated a little bit. We got one of these pre-made crusts and we put it in a pie pan, cooked it for 10 minutes at 450 degrees. It shriveled up a little bit, but we think it's because we left it in the fridge, uh, the crust in the fridge a little too long. Now, to get away from having to put this in the oven for 10 minutes, you could purchase a pre-cooked crust or you can make your own crust with graham crackers. So some of the things you're going to need here, you're going to need some instant pudding, 
and you can either purchase whipped cream in the container already from the store or you can whip your own. So we're going to get the pudding going because that's going to take about five minutes to form in the fridge. So with this instant pudding, it's just one package to two cups of milk. And this is vanilla. Now you could do this with chocolate or any other flavor, but vanilla seems to work best for this, this pie here. So now we're just going to whip this to get it all together. And you want to in the directions say to whip it for one minute and then we'll set it in the fridge for five and by the time we get all the other ingredients uh, combined and made this will be ready to go so we got the pudding in the fridge now It'll take about five minutes to set up in that time we're going to make some whipping cream now you can make your you can buy it or you can make it your own we're going to make it our own now you can with uh, Making your own whipping cream, you can add sugar, but with this pie, we're going to have enough sugar in it already that we're just going to uh, whip it until medium peaks. So we'll just get it turned on here. Just takes a few minutes. All right, it's been about two minutes. We'll see where we're at on the peaks here. Yep, that's where we want it. Now you want to be careful that you don't let this whip too long or then it turns into butter and then your pie is not going to taste good any, at all. Okay, so we'll get this off of the mixer. And as you can see, you just want the medium peaks. And peaks being when you whip it, it just comes up and it falls down. Okay. So we'll get that out of the way. Now we have to make the peanut butter powdered sugar mix and we'll do that in the food processor. So we're going to make what they call the peanut butter crumble. Now what you want is white powdered sugar and it's about a one to one ratio with the amount of powdered sugar and peanut butter we're going to put in here. And all you'll do is you'll just mix it together and it will form a peanut butter crumble. So we're gonna and we'll mix that in and see where we're at on that. And as you can see, it gets to that mixture there. So we're gonna add a little more peanut butter and a little more powdered sugar because we're going to need it for putting this pie together. I'll probably just clean up this whole, this jar wasn't completely full, it was about three quarters full. And you can use chunky peanut butter or smooth peanut butter, either one will work. Get that all cleaned off the spatula. The only difference is with the chunky peanut butter, Sometimes some people think it's more of a realistic peanut butter flavor when you get a, uh, a peanut when you're eating it. Okay, let's mix this up and see what the consistency is going to be. That looks good there. Got a good crumble. Now it kind of it's kind of still on the moist side, so I'm just going to add a little more powdered sugar. Now there's no right or wrong quantity when making this. It's just pretty much personal preference. And there's hundreds of recipes on how to make peanut butter uh, pie online. And you just have to see which one you would think you would like best. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now let's get the pudding out of the fridge and start constructing this peanut butter pie. So we got the, gel, uh, the pudding out of the fridge. Now we're going to construct this pie and even though the sides have fell down, I'm not really too concerned with it because once you eat and figure out how delicious this thing really is, it really doesn't matter what the crust looks like. So first goes the pudding. We'll put the pudding on the bottom here. Okay. You want to evenly distribute that throughout the base of the pie crust there. Now comes the peanut butter crumble. 
and this is where you can either put as much or as little of the crumble on it as you want but you want to save a little bit because that's gonna you're gonna top it off with the crumble as well so take and, and take your hands and sprinkle it around so I'm going to use most, I'm going to save about two spoonfuls for the top because you want uh, the peanut butter to be tasted in the mixture of with the pudding. And the peanut butter, you can make it drier so it doesn't stick as much or you can make it wetter. It's all personal preference on that. Okay, let's see what we got here. Put one more spoonful here. Okay, now it's whipped cream time. Now with the whipped cream, you want to take and put the whole uh, amount of whipped cream on the top here. Now if you bought it out of the store, out of the little containers, you just want to top it to till it covers the whole, the pie here. You can never have too much whipped cream. So we'll just top it. Try to level it off smooth. We had more, I'd add more, but that's all we have and that's fine. Okay. Alright, now the reason why we saved a little bit of the peanut butter crumble is because we'll sprinkle the rest on top of the pie to add, get more of that peanut butter flavor. And depending on what slice you get will depend on how much peanut butter flavor you have and if you have more whipped cream whipped cream after you serve it you can add a little bit more to the top of your pie and there you have it a cheating way to make no bake Amish peanut butter pie now, now you want to put this in the fridge for about 30 minutes to really allow everything kind of to solidify up more cut it serve it and enjoy A deep freeze is a good investment for a minimal amount of money. They range in price from $50 to upwards of a couple thousand dollars depending on what model you get. Our model is a seven and a half cubic foot. Now deep freezes are not just for freezing pork, beef, and pizzas. You can freeze stuff that you've grown in your own garden or you purchase at the farmer's market. We're freezing some sweet corn, eggplant, cold slaw that we make, and pumpkin juice that we juiced. Now you may not have a basement like we do to keep your deep freeze at. Some people keep it in the garage, in the kitchen, or other rooms in the house. To get a good deal on a deep freeze, we purchased ours around the 4th of July holiday last year when a lot of stores had them on sale. And if you get a hold of the right store, they'll deliver it to your house for free. Well, that's all the time we have. Hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And as you can see, there's many different locations and areas that you can look for discounted canning jars. Everywhere from the internet to yard sales. And that peanut butter Amish pie. Now that's a treat that anybody will like. For all of us here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, I'm Joy Barrett encouraging you. Take a child gardening and start growing some memories. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? 
Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. No matter where you live, you can compost year-round with the Worm Factory 360. It requires very little maintenance. As of 2010, the Worm Factory 360 is the only self-sorting worm composter made in the USA. Made with high-quality food-grade recyclable plastic with a 20-year limited warranty. For more information on how to purchase your own Worm Factory 360, visit www.lvworms.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151-acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting FOOD to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. The show never ends on our Facebook page. Keyword, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter, see what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the WI Veg Gardener, G-A-R-D-E-N-R. -E you can email us at the wi at gmail.com with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show.